Ghana's Volta region has for years been adorned with rich vegetation and breathtaking ecosystem. Life is not that easy for someone like me being in Accra almost the whole of my life and then coming to the village, a remote area like this. Cocoa has been, uh, has been a very important economic uh, tree in the, in, in the region but for the long time now after, the, after 1983 drought and bushfires Cocoa has not been taken up seriously. Between 1980 and 1983, a harsh drought and wild bushfires, followed by reckless tree felling here, in the ensuing years brought a once vibrant economic activity on its knees, and poor villagers are paying the hard price now. The Satyama Initiative is a program being run by the Japanese government. And Sato means a mountain area management. Now we had a program for Ghana and we decided to select the Weto Range because this is one of the high biodiversity areas, what we call the global significant biodiversity areas, which has been neglected. From the onset, the people could not understand the reason why some people would come and ask them questions and start bringing them projects. But uh, they were some, somehow uh, skeptical about what we are, uh, we are bringing. Some thought we were coming to take their lands and uh, may maybe government is coming to seize their lands and so on. <laughs> The area is not under any formal government conservation. So it is the people who use their own indigenous systems to uh, manage the area. But we remember that the area was subjected to fire almost every year. The place would get burned. We are suffering from fire burning. So this is our mountain here too. The same. When time comes, the dry season, this place all together they will burn. Up to the end of the mountain, down there. At times, what you eat crab is a problem. Even though we are farmers, but the farming that we are doing in this village is just for food. And at times, crab, we are farmers, but we buy food stuff before we eat. They were doing farming along the slopes, very deep. There were illegal chainsaw operations. Uh, people were cutting the trees indiscriminately. They had very nice waterfalls and they were all drying up. The river, the rivulets, all of them were drying up. They had also special animal species, you know, they were all uh, gone. So we decided to bring the project here. The Communality Development and Knowledge Management for the Satoyama Initiative funded by the Japan Biodiversity Fund and implemented by the UNDP's Global Environment Facilities small grants program sought to change this. Basically, there are four main activities that is to be implemented. One is to ensure that we conserve the ecosystem, which means that the systems within the environment will begin to function effectively. The trees will be conserved, will replant the degraded areas, thereby conserving water bodies, water sources and then the rivers and everything will be able to flow to give water to the people and they will prevent fire so that the animals will come back you know, into the area. It's not easy because there's no water, good drinking water and other things, but we manage. The program has since 2012 pumped some $280,000 into a scheme to ensure societies live in harmony with nature.
Uh, the community is mostly farming. Community. Uh, we produce crops like uh, cocoa, formerly coffee, plantain, cassava, beans, maize, and granules. Uh, our main river is Mawe. We have been feeding, or we depend on it before uh, the government use a pipe bomb water to feed us. <laughs> The second thing was also to conserve the agricultural practices. We know that they have indigenous system of farming, but we need to induce it with more than we by encouraging them to adopt organic farming. You know, so we another reason was to introduce organic agriculture where they can prepare their own compost and use, and you know, also as to minimize the level of degradation and also to prevent them from uh, weeding further the area. You can be an area and with the help of your organic fertilizer, you can cultivate over a longer period before you move. It is the livelihood activities that has uh, really catch, uh, caught up well. But our main aim of uh, protecting the natural environment is being achieved. All these things are part of the Satoyama project. The cocoa project is part of the Satoyama project, but the, this is the actual nursery where we nurse our cocos and uh, all that is. The cocoa, we had about 70, 700 pots, 700 pots of cocoa. When we nurse them, the number was 1,800,000. After the fires, the land was not good, so we didn't have any cocoa farms. When the land was good, we were growing cocoa. We got money, life was booming, but lately we are really poor. The lands were not fertile again to support any crop. We are encouraging uh, a couple of spices. Black pepper is one. Uh, we are encouraging monodera, which is a, a spice and have a very high value. We are encouraging zalupia. So these are the three the, the spices that we are encouraging. And uh, now uh, in the land use planning, we made it clear that they should concentrate more on the, uh, they should not cultivate on the top of the, the crest of the mountain. So that is supposed to be purely conserved. Then just below, below the hill, they are supposed to plant cocoa and then also can do the arable farming. Now the third uh, aspect was also to conserve the culture of the people. You know, this area has very rich culture and we didn't want it to dissipate. So we wanted to integrate it into modern way of management. So we look at the way they do things, the way they, the proverbs, the, everything. So we document all of them including the very important sacred sites like caves that they used to hide when there was war in the ancient days you know some caves that uh, used to uh, serve as habitat for some wild animals you know we try to see how we can revive all these uh, areas uh, into uh, The last one was to introduce livelihood system to support the people within the landscape. And especially we targeted women so that we can support them with uh, livelihood that will minimize their further degradation of the area. So we look at activities that they know how to do better, like oil processing, processing of uh, non-timber forest products, cultivation, of uh, NTFP, that is an anti product, uh, honey production, real no grass cutters, you know, all the 
natural resource based uh, enterprises that can sustain the environment and also uh, improve on the income of the people. I can see that through this initiative, what some cannot do, they are able to do it. And some of them, they were not doing anything, but through this, some of them are trading, and some of them go to the market and buy food, food stuffs, and come and sell it. And some of them, they use this money to buy cassava and make a mao, and some use it to buy palm kernel. Many people used to buy, to do the, this amijin, because when they gave us the money, there came a season that there are many palm kernel in the town, so they used the money to buy palm nuts. We've been taught if the bees are in, how we secure around the boxes, how we make fire bells around so that if there is any bushfire, it doesn't you know, cross over into the farm. Formerly, people didn't know that mango farm is a, 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 a very profitable job. But now they know through the Sotoyama project that when we are able to plant mangoes in time to come, we will pay school fees out of it. We will manage our homes out of it. We will build houses out of this mango farming. This grass cutter farming will also generate income for our families. As for this beekeeping, it helps me a lot. I, I, been, I have been using it for paying my worst school fees and it helped me to do a lot of work. In two years of the implementation, 850 hectares of the degraded land have been restored and rehabilitated with 18 tree nurseries, which have produced and distributed 1 million tree seedlings. For you, the women, what would you recommend that the project should do for you in future. project Okay. Uh, she says that another project that you would like the women to be given is bread people. Through this Atomaya project, I am very happy with my children and I know that they can do more to us so that more we can get more from what we are doing. This project, uh, it lets us know that not this, uh, this keeping, that is the only thing we can do. We the women in this community who no longer depend so much on our husbands. We also do something to improve ourselves. With this Atoyama initiative, this very beekeeping, uh, we have seen that it will help us a lot. That is why when they brought the boxes and taught us how to do it, in fact, we put all our maximum 
uh, support into it. The Satoyama project is really helping us. We just started, but I believe it is what would bring our cocoa back. We are learning a lot of new improved ways of growing cocoa. And I believe we can improve our lives and poverty would calm down. It will help us in a lot of things like this, uh, beekeeping, uh, grass cutter railing and all that. We have learned a lot and it will help us. From 2011, we started working on the Satoyama project. A development Institute was the organization that uh, did the research for that. That's the baseline. And we did it with... Uh, six uh, NGOs and then uh, beyond that each NGO now have money we also were given resources to work between the area between Pebe and Agate all on the range all on the Wadu range yes so that's what we, we so in our project we indicated that uh, we want to look at conservation uh, of the man mountain crest and then land use planning and then more importantly to bring in eco-tourism. Looking at into the future, we are now thinking of the entire landscape, which is uh, running from uh, uh, Sangha area all up to Mount Afejeto. And that is a bigger area. Now we are looking at putting them into segments, about three or four segments and then organizing the groups of the people there to be able to manage it. And then trying to scale up the ecotourism potential of the area, you know, having para sliding you know, at some important points so that it could be a, an annual or a regular feature for them. People will come here and, and see a lot of forest groups, animals, which the species will, I mean, will run away. We still do still come here and people from where do come in to see how this Satoyama brought this uh, green biodiversity project over here. But we hope that uh, at the end, if we have another two or three years program still from Satoyama, the environment, the landscape will totally change. Poverty can also be reduced because within three years, Coco can start producing. If the project is sustained, then in the future we will see a thriving community living in harmony with nature. I have the hope that if we are able to develop this very well, one, it could serve as a commodity to be traded on the carbon market because it's a big landscape, almost close to about 100,000 hectares. And if we're able to put it under a sustainable management system, we can trade that on the carbon market. And that means a bigger money for the region to develop.